Hey, what's going on, guys and girls? Hard drive here. 163 Rio Grande. <coughs> and that's a RCI 2950 CD. People have been asking me about them. Uh, you notice I don't normally, you don't see me selling these. I do from time to time, they're special orders. This is a special order. I'm going to Connecticut as soon as the mic comes. Still waiting on those mics. But this is the foundation of the N4. Now, this new screen, yeah, I like it. I'm going to try to shut the lights off for you. I've uh, shut them off, did a test run on this to see what everything looked like. But I didn't record it. It looks fuzzy on the screen. You know, this camera screen. But uh, in relation to a couple of questions, a couple of guys have asked me what I thought about it. The radio is a good radio. I'll get into that in a minute. Let's get back to the screen. As a professional driver, one that wears glasses and drove in the worst weather you could ever imagine, would I like this? I would. Did I like them before? No, I didn't because they were more difficult to operate, hard to see, etc. I used the 2510s back in the day. But now that's not made. Some people don't like the striker. Would this be more durable than the striker? Probably. Well, it's hard to say. The channel selector, this, this channel selector is going to outlive the striker. Even though it's an encoder, it is. You can replace it. Easily, actually quite simple. Potentiometers are all, I guess, would be equal. It doesn't have all the other gizmos that the striker has on it. It's nowhere near the power. But does it produce an awesomely clean waveform? Yes, it does. Good receive, good transmit, good audio or AF, you know, the sound coming out of the speaker. I'll show you a little bit. Don't be looking for no power monster. I'd say the best thing that this would be for, you could use it as a base, but you know, if you had an old Texas Star 500, a four pill messenger, or Texas Star 350, this matched into either one, AM and sideband. You know, this is basically a sideband radio. It does both, but if you're a sidebander, it'll, it'll do it, okay? So first let me uh, show you what it does. Get out a little bit here. Like I said, they're not monsters. But they'll talk. And yeah, all you do, there's no batteries on these new ones by the way. No batteries. And to get to your CB channels, just hit manual. And there's a channel selector with a stock mic. You can change the channels right through the, the microphone. The microphone looks like this, with a couple of updates in the impedance match into the mic amp and, and a little change in the frequency response. These are working, and uh, I'm setting them up primarily for these. And they're doing good. Okay. I now have a, an N4 due to another customer that it's, it was downgrading in my opinion but he's happy, I'm happy it was that one that it was done for his dad he liked it, well he didn't, his dad didn't like the radio, it was more complicated to operate and these radios in a way are more complicated so if you're not really used to one and if you do buy one and you never had one you best read the book I got some videos on someone that didn't read the book here in the near future, possibly. Like writing it on FM and not AM. Anyways, don't freak out on the brightness yet. I will shut the lights off, I'll go dim, etc. Okay, at full power. Yeah, it's pretty decent. One of the reasons you didn't see me pushing these because major heat issue and 
And I know a lot of drivers out there that talk. That's what they do when they're driving. I know what's up. I know exactly what's up when you're out there on those highways and byways, especially when there's nothing else to do and you got some DX rolling on sideband, AM, you know, wherever. I know. And you want to talk. And you're sitting there for 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 48, 52, and higher hours. Done there, been that. I know. So these would get hot. In the advent of the new Ma the Max Mod, yes, it's sporting a Max Mod. Some people don't like who make it. Hey, man, I can't help everything who made it. And they're working great. It's finally a product that has hit the market that's uh, actually worthwhile. I don't use them to try to achieve more wattage. I utilize them to keep them cooler and help prolong the longevity of the radio. So anyway, that's on Sesame Street. You can see what it's doing. It's, it's doing a great job. Right. And I can take this down to like one-tenth of a watt. And audio, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, audio. And a radio like this, you know, would take your 350 or your 500. This one's going to be run barefoot. A lot of people think they could just hook up a radio to some amplifier. They are full of shit. Cut and dry. Or they don't have a clue what they're doing. Or don't give a shit. Excuse my French. Don't give a shit. Take your pick. One of the three. So if you're running an AB biased amp, you know, with the maximum drive or at the saturation point of a crystal clear wave would be your maximum output power, you know, and then the minimum for a clean wave and yet not to allow the relays to chatter and cause any kind of spurious emissions and things of that nature. This radio would be great for that and run the amp. Just run it down a couple watts. It should be matched. Okay? It should be matched. AM the side, man. But a uh, great radio for that. So let's uh, take a look at sideband. So I'm going to put this on here. Don't be looking for no monster. Get off of Sesame Street here. These are built, the surface mount on these, these are built like a tank. Audio, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. CQ, DX, audio. I do like the way the screen lights up. In here right now with all the light, all the um, fluorescent lights, it's bright in here. I don't know if you can see the meter all that great. Audio. And also, well, like a nine pounds, it's set right at nine. And when you modulate, okay, see everything that's going on. Let's turn the noise blanker on. You see it. I ain't gonna turn everything else on, but it's highly visible. I'm not really sure how this camera is gonna pick that up. Okay, while we're at it. So I'm going to try not to break my neck. I'm going to turn this down so it doesn't give no glare. If you hear me giving some, oh shit, bear with me. It's getting a little bit dark in here. The blue is not purple. It's blue, but it's like a dark powder blue. And... I told, I think it was you, Todd, I wasn't sure about what angles you can see it on. I don't care what angle you try, you can see this thing perfectly well. Almost from like straight up and down. Oh, look at my hand, it's glowing. Alright, so let's go to the dimmer. I'm going to start from the bottom of it while we shut it off, okay? You can't see the keypad. There it is. Now these lights, all these here, see I'm shutting them off? That's bright. I keep it bright so I can see it. These are fairly dim, alright? Like really dim. 
and so is this. It's a lot dimmer than what I see in the camera. That would not light up your windshield. It wouldn't light up your passenger windows, you know, while you're driving. I know how important it is if you're a driver or even, you know, if you're driving a car. But in a car, you usually have the radio down lower. It's not going to blare through both your driver's side, passenger side windows and your windshield. You know, everybody that's an experienced driver when the weather's bad, especially in the snow when it's like softballs coming at you, you turn all your interior lights out. I got it. Well, that's a lot dimmer than, let me see if I can change the angle of the camera, see if it changes. I know it looks bright as hell, but it's really not that bright. And it's a real deep, powdery looking blue. So then we go to the next step. Okay, we turn those on, and they're dim. Here's the next step. That would be okay for driving pretty much. I know it looks bright in the camera. It might not be that bad when I visualize it in the video. And then that's real bright. You know, I'll start again. Off. Find the mic here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, when you want to see your signal, you know, anything over nine pounds comes in red. At least that's how everything is set. If you need the keypad, there it is. And you know, the uh, dimmer is right next to the mic socket. So you feel for the mic and you hit the button. Are these radios for a first timer on one of these? They're complicated. You got to read the book a couple of times. These aren't something that you just stick in and drive down the road like a lot of the galaxies with a channel selector, volume squelch, knob, and echo. You know, there's more to these. Even though all you do is push the manual button to go back and forth in frequencies and split and shift. Well, you don't need to split, but it's easy to operate. And you can see, if you're driving at night, you can see what's going on. The way they have the segments, not the segments, but like the categories change throughout the different colors. I think that's a really cool idea. I like that. Let me turn the lights back on. So if you're a 2950 fan, well, I don't know if I can get these anymore. I know I can get the 2950s. The N4s are almost gone. I'm not sure what's going on with Ranger. Is that cool? It is. Well, I guess you can almost tell with the lights on that it's really not that bright. It was on, well, there's no windows in here, so it's pitch black. Except for some of the test equipment that was on. Hope some of this was informative. Yeah, I think that's cool. It's about time. <laughs> and it's, it's LED, I'm not sure how long. It should, it should last a long time. There's no more incandescent bulbs in these radios. None. Yes, with the Max Mod, it runs much cooler. It's durable. Stay tuned in. Hope you have a great Sunday. Hard Drive 163. The Mud Duck Station down by the Rio Grande. I'm out of here. Click, click.